Welcome to a, the second episode of Behind the Bar, Without the Bar podcast here, recording live at World of Beer UCF. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and co-hosting, as always, for a second episode in a row, the already internet famous <laughs> Jeff, general manager of World of Beer. Yeah, very famous. <laughs> you have a nice haircut. Thank you. I appreciate I'm it. I'm sure you've been getting a lot of compliments on that. I have been, yeah. <laughs> don't, uh, word to the wise, don't shave your head for Halloween uh, into the Ragnar Lothbrook mohawk. You got to live with it the next day. <laughs> yeah, with no tattoos either. <laughs> so in this, in this second episode, I, I messed up. I want to do it live. And what could have gone wrong went wrong. So I will figure that out. Hopefully in the future episodes, we will be doing something live like that. I hope uh, so. But, but, but for now, we're doing live here, and it's going to be uploaded hopefully tomorrow or Saturday. Depends on how when I get to it. So, new formatting. I want to get to the beer right away that we're going to be highlighting. We may or may not have a special guest coming. We told him maybe 15 minutes ago to, to come on by. He wants to be on the show. He is still talking at the bar. Yeah, he's still at the bar drinking, so, so he's our kind of guest. Yeah, he, he so enjoys we'll just, his we'll beer. Just, we'll fill in. He'll have to miss out on what we're drinking right now. So, uh, Jeff, why don't you take yeah, me? Yeah, we just got in. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure some of you guys have already heard of the terrap- uh, Terrapin, so fresh and so green. Um, we have an actual fresh hop highlight to, uh, tonight, so we got five uh, fresh hopped IPAs. Cool. So it's... Um, they're just a wet hop. It's it's a little bit more pungent, a little bit more hot presence in them, but very smooth, uh, great profile, and so fresh and so green is one of the more popular ones, at least regionally for us. Um, it's a limited release from Terrapin. It comes out once a year. A really, really mellow pale ale, so really nice beer. Um, and this is this one here? That's the one right here, okay. yeah. So as we go into the smell here, or Jeff goes into the taste, mellow hop, light, almost like a pale ale. Yep. But Light. it does have that kick in the end with yeah. the, the bitterness. But it's very full. It's it's very full flavored for for a lighter pale ale. So it's a really nice yeah. beer, easy to drink, and and has a lot of good flavor to it if, for if, sure. If you definitely like the the, the hop and the, and the dryness of hops. This is a beer for you. Not my kind of thing, but it is light and refreshing. We have a we have a guest coming over. Hello. You're on you're on the mic. You're live. Live. Yeah. Yeah. Are you jumping on? Are you going to jump on? You- Amanda's nervous. She doesn't know if she wants to join us. How are you? I feel like this is an interview. I'm getting all red like a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda's blushing. Yeah. She's very nervous. Should I come on? Yeah, come on. Yeah, the mic's already on. Sit down. Hello? Here, give us Hello? your opinion on this beer. Okay. Guess what it is. She's smelling it. Analyzing it. Hoppy. Kind of hoppy. Mm-hmm. It's terrapin, so fresh and so green. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, fancy. I like it. You're Would a little you, mic shy, huh? I am mic shy. That's okay. No one can see you yet. Not till next week. <laughs> Wait, Hopefully. Are you going to do. We were going to live cam? stream it on YouTube, but things get, went wrong and I'm impatient. Things went haywire. Yeah. And we were going to do a video, but. Yeah. I like the setup. It's legit. I know. Thank you. Ariana yeah. said the same thing. People will start joining us on Thursdays, hopefully. Yeah. Cool. We're working there, getting there. So how do you like working at World of Beer since you're here and you're in the guest seat? We're getting interviewed. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I'm interview. in the hot seat right now. What was beer school like? It was really intimidating because I couldn't try anything. Yeah, we talked about it last week about <laughs> beer school and how uh, how intense it is. So yeah. It's really scary. <laughs> what would you recommend give advice for someone who maybe is going into beer school or wants to apply to world of beer make sure you're an alcoholic i can take right. that i like that i dig it yeah i dig it yeah just make sure you're an alcoholic and you know your beer and you'll learn it second question what's your favorite food in the kitchen because we do have a new kitchen by the way yeah the tots and it's delicious just the tots. tots the tavern tots loaded with cheese Beer, cheese, really? bacon, jalapeno, sour cream. There's nothing that you don't like. Nothing. On that. No. Not the everything's pretzel, good. Everything's good. Yeah, but I like the pretzel too. <laughs> <laughs> I like both. Yeah, what they're about both the, the, best. the beer battered apple slices? I haven't had those, honestly. Wait, what? no. Yeah, I did. I tried those. We I think those, those are the best thing on the menu. Yeah, those are good. I really That's like also those. the best. Yeah, that. Amanda's so. picks. They're all the best. <laughs> yeah, the just best. everything's good. <laughs> everything's good. Awesome. So we have. 
Now we have a party here. We do. Now we got too many people. We have too many people. Oh Someone has to leave. All right, I'm out of here. See okay. you. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Bye, Amanda. Have a fun shift. This being on the microphone is really scary. Why? No just one's talk. looking at you. I was nervous, and then I got he a few beers drinking. in me, and then I got real giggly <laughs> and fun. So. Yeah, the, those funny beers. <laughs> you get used to it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Well, thanks for being on the show. Hopefully, you'll be on next time. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll prepare you next time yeah. so you don't come in blind. <laughs> she's bl- she's you... blushing so hard right now. <laughs> That's what happens when we walk by and say hi. Yeah, you're don't ever walk by and say hi to us. <laughs> or if you're on the show. <laughs> Stop being so polite. It's recording. Are you ready? Ready. Our our Hop guest has in. finally arrived from his his mingling at the bar podcast. <laughs> Here at World Here, you can stuff. try some so fresh and so green. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this, uh, no, this isn't the Terrapin. born yesterday. Yeah. Feel free to feel free to adjust the mic however you feel comfortable. It's on, so you're 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 live. Sounds so, good. Jeff, we have a special guest. His name is also Mike. It is. I am oh, also Mike. Mike. I am Mike too. Uh, but well, are you Mike okay. number two? I'm Mike number one. Mike number one. I'll be Mike, Mike number, number two. two. Nice right. to meet you, Mike number two. We actually had a Mike number two last week too, so now we're two for two on two our, two podca- on our podcast with yeah. Mikes. Okay. So, oh look, Bill's here. Anyway, so Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm, just, I'm a student at UCF right now. Yeah. Um, on the weekends, I work down at a, a brewery called Orchid Island Brewery. What is it called? Orchid Island. Brewery. Orchid Island Brewery. It's in Vero Beach, Florida. Vero Beach. Um, so, you do that on weekends? Oh uh, yeah, on the Friday, like Saturdays, I go down. Fridays and Saturdays. And what do you do there? I help bartend a little bit on on Saturdays. Uh, I help brew beer. So pretty much like cool. our main brew day. Yeah. Is Saturday. Yeah. Uh, That's pretty awesome. Much down to like only one one day a week right now. Just I don't I don't mean to interrogate you, but we didn't have any prep like pre show, so I don't really know a lot about what you do. No, so this be a little interrogation. So how long have you been there? Only a few months. Uh, it's only been open for one year. Okay. Uh, the guy who owns it, Alden Bing, has been brewing beer for like seven years now. Okay. Um, but he's only been open for a year uh, in his in his brewery, his brew house, and everything. Yeah. Uh, what do they, they What do they specialize in over primarily there? Primarily focus on West Coast IPAs. Okay. Um, their their premier beer is uh, is a ruby red grapefruit. Okay. Double IPA. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. It Star Ruby. Okay. Um, we let's call it the original grapefruit IPA because uh, Sculpin started doing it. I think after he did. <laughs> uh, Sculpin trying like, to steal everybody's like, thunder. Yeah, you know, we got better grapefruit in Vero Beer Beach anyway. Oh you know? uh, yeah, we're the citrus state. Yep. How are they trying to steal Indian that from River, us out Indian in California? County. How are you going to grab better grapefruit than? I'm than from Indian Farm? River County. Yeah. Well, yes. no, I'm from Martin County, but pretty close. Yeah. So what is, what is the brewery called again? Orchid Island. Orchid Island. Okay. They call the Barrier to... Islands out there a lot of. There's a lot of stuff named like. Orchid cool. Island out there. Yeah. Um, that's what they call a lot of the Fairy Island area, yeah. uh, is or- the Orchid Island. Well, thanks for being on the show, man. I know this is very last minute, and yeah. you've been cool to join us. Just hang out here. Walk in the time. fire of Bon the Bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As yeah. you can see here. Does Jeff have nice hair? God. He's got a, <laughs> everybody's got to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Always. It's stellar. So, uh, so would you say out there, Orchid Island, they're all hopheads out there, obviously doing the double or the West Coast style, the double IPAs. Is that what's your favorite kind of beer? Yeah, I, I tend to drink a lot of IPAs. I'm getting into sours now. Interesting. Um, I'm drinking a hybrid right which now, which is also <laughs> surprisingly like what what our head brewers has gotten into as well as is, is sours. Um, they did a, a dark size on like two or three weeks ago right that we're waiting we're waiting to pull out an russian imperial stout out of our bourbon barrels uh-huh. and we're gonna like clean those out and then throw the dark size on there for like a year jeez now, do you guys have a separate system for the sours or are you just doing that on the on the regular we system? use the rest of the equipment for it interesting because yeah. i've heard of sours ruining you know well they're very the tannic equipment. they're supposed they're very similar to like a cider kind yeah. of with the, t- the tannic uh yeah. you know structure of the, of the beer it, they can rot out beer lines i know that yeah. um most sours if you're going to have a dedicated line you usually do a soda line mm-hmm. they're a little bit thicker higher gauge plastic right um but uh you know 
I don't, I don't think if you're brewing, it'll ruin too. I mean, unless you're constantly brewing sours. Tend to like clean out our equipment a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, if you if you load your sour into something else that's been used, your sour is pretty much going to overtake any flavor that that you have, like residual flavors. In there. Yeah. Really well, cool. I think that that'll be cool. I, I know there's a, a thing in craft cocktails. They do the barrel aged cocktails now, mm-hmm. and um, there's a. Uh, there's some cool things that they do with that where they kind of age progress the barrel. So basically whatever whatever drink you put into that barrel, that barrel absorbs as much flavor as the drink absorbs from the barrel. So if you put in, like you just said, your Russian Imperial Stout into a barrel, when you take that bar- that out and then you put that, that dark size on in, it's, just, it's gonna taste stouty because it's gonna absorb yeah. what was just in the barrel yeah. just yeah. as much as it's gonna impart its own flavor into the barrel. So right. then oh, the next thing too. that goes in is gonna taste like a dark saison yeah. and an imperial stout. So it's it's cool when they do that. I know they do that with the craft cocktails and they'll literally plan out the entire year of what's gonna be in that barrel and how each of it is gonna subsequently impart its flavor into the drink. Right Right now we have like five of our own beers on, on draft. Uh, between the the Star Ruby. We have a Spectrum, which is a triple IPA. Uh, really? Uh, the Jungle Jungle Trail, which is a black IPA using white grapefruit that we, uh-huh. we got in the bureau as Ooh, well. That'll be like a tart, it's earthy. It's big. It's really good. Uh, the Citron is like a, a farmhouse ale. Okay. That we age in, uh, what is it, Cabernet barrels. Turned out really well. We did Rocky Water Brew Fest a couple months ago, or a couple weeks ago in Melbourne. Yeah. We got a lot it, yeah. of good... Uh, a lot of good feedback. From so where are you? Are you're there. doing a lot of barrel stuff. Where are you getting your barrels from? I heard a, a I wine barrel and a bourbon barrel. barrel. I, don't know I know there is barrels. Florida wine down south, Hollywood area. Are you getting that from a Florida winery? Or? I have no idea. No idea. From now. Well, you can buy Jack Daniel's whiskey barrels from Costco. Can you? Yeah, for seventy-seven hundred dollars. Oh, full, of, full, of whiskey. full. Yeah, full of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, I mean, <laughs> I want one without yeah. the whiskey. In it, you know? <laughs> no, you want the with the whiskey. Yeah. What am I gonna do with all that whiskey? Well, you drink it all. Yeah, drink I'll it all. I drink a barrel of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, it'd take well, me I mean, my. It take me a lifetime. Bring, bring it here and, like and a drink it. Big party first. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just. I'm thinking of how to transport. Have I'm a ladle. That, that Jameson commercial with the big hawk of uh, hawk oh, taking yeah. the barrel away. Taking the barrel and going. That's how I'll get it home. I'm that'd be really cool. So what's it been like, Mike, working in a craft brewery? It's uh, like drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> I've I, never heard I, that. I didn't That's know awesome. a whole lot about brewing beer until yeah. I started hanging out and work, working in the brew house on the weekend. And uh, it's really cool just trying to, like, pick up as much knowledge as I possibly can. Yeah. Dude, that, is is that something you want to you wanna do post-college? It's, it's or possible. Um, based on, like, how they really they really got something special going on down there. Yeah. So it's definitely something I want to stay involved in as right. long as I can because I know, like, it, He's got plans uh, for the you know next few years to expand and, and do like a higher production. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing seeing our beer all over Florida soon. Hopefully, yeah. are they are they in the distribution? Best. A little bit. Okay. We work through Brown a little bit. Okay. Um, but it's pretty much like a few kegs here and there. We sell most of our beer in our town. In house, yeah. That's we cool. We got 16 taps up front, and then there's like another 10 in the back. I know where my next road trip's gonna be. It's they gotta figure it out, man. If you like IPAs. Well, I'm, I'm already. That's on my way home. Yeah. Next time I'm going home. You got some good IPAs. I'm, well, gonna, I'm, gonna, tell, I'm gonna tell Mama Bear I'm it's gonna be right late. On, it's right on Beachside. Um, you go out there, and if, you know there's one road and some hotels, yeah. and then the ocean. Well, Vero Beach. That's uh, that's like Captain Hiram's, right? Is out in that out in that area, or is that? I think so. I think yeah. So that, I've been out that way. I actually just went there with you my like family down for Thanksgiving. Down 95. It's just south. Last of, year, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Sebastian, Sebastian out. Just went as the last year. Just went right? as the last year. It's Thanksgiving this year, almost. Time, time flies, man. Yeah. I feel like I go. feel like the East Coast of Florida is really picking up in the terms of craft beer scene. They're not. Yeah. They're not up with I think South Florida, Tampa yet, but I mean, they're getting up there fast. We have a better re- reaction from people when we come north. When you go down south for festivals, everyone's got Funky Buddha down there, and so they're kind of like overpower. Everyone's just kind of Funky like, Buddha really, really like controls South Florida. We really like our Funky yeah. Buddha, and so like yeah. when we come up here, there's genuinely a lot of people that are excited to see us come up here. Yeah, like that's in cool. Melbourne, in Melbourne, there are people getting in line. Yeah, you know it's funny though because like Funky yeah. Buddha does own South Florida, and there is some stuff down there that's that's notable, like Do oh. South and, and some. One of, of the, my favorite Do South, yeah. Due South is down I heard, there. I heard Florida Jay Wakefield's really there. good. Wakefield. I like Winwood down there. Winwood's good. Um, they do some. They do some funky sour stuff. But I like their stuff. Funky Boot is definitely South Florida's main yeah, brewery, just like Cigar City's, Tampa's, yeah, and. But I was just gonna say, in Tampa, it's like Cigar City was there, 
and it didn't scare anybody off because there's still no. some great stuff coming out of Tampa that, that just said, you know what, screw it, Cigar City's here, but we're going to do our thing too. Rap, you know, Three Daughters, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. If you like hoppy stuff, Green Bench, you know, for their hoppier beers. But Angry Chairs, Angry good. Chair, yeah. yeah. And they just keep growing and growing by Mad Beach, I heard, it's pretty solid down down that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Somewhere exclusively does sours. Are you talking about South Florida again? No, or no Tampa? Uh, Tampa still. Yeah, Saint I mean, Sour, uh, Saint Somewhere in uh, Tarpon. Southern, uh, Seventh Sun is good too. Seventh Sun, yeah. I mean, you can just go go on and on about the the breweries. Tampa, I mean, if Tampa. If you live over South in the West Florida Coast, still, you're good to go. You get lucky, man. It, us in Orlando here. We, don't. we talked about it last, yeah, last week. week. What, yeah, what's your opinion of the Orlando craft market? Not a whole lot of it. Yeah, I think that should be a question we should ask yeah, every guest every, every week. What do you yeah, think of Orlando? Really Orlando. Like, isn't all that special. No, that's what we were saying. They're very mainstream. They're very mm-hmm. distribution heavy, and they're very. Uh, they want to appeal to everybody because we're, we're a, a tourist it's, it's town. It's all located. Yeah, they say, oh yeah, well, there's crap breweries yeah. in Orlando. Come drink local because you're at Disney visiting, and it's not really. Not really and they're the like, this beer. beer has to offer. No, and absolutely not. Got to get out of Orlando for that. You know, and I'm I think Brew Island. Hub has better beer than Orlando as a whole. When I, had I, I don't want to. I don't want to toot Brew, Brew Hub's horn too much yet. <laughs> <laughs> a couple beers in, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. So before we get into our topic, we have a very, very special beer that Jeff has brought out for us are we to ready sample. Now? Uh, I'm ready. Oh are you gosh. ready, Mike? Number two. Are well, you ready? I, I didn't know I was going to include in this. What is it? Well, surprise! You're getting a free beer. <laughs> That's the dogfish head. It's the uh, the new dogfish head higher math. Um, really nice, rare release golden ale from them. It has some. Uh, Sour cherry in it. What else is in this bad boy? So Chocolate and sour cherry. It's, so. it's the Dogfish. It's their 20th year anniversary beer, correct? Correct. That they're, they, they're making for their 20th anniversary. Are you guys doing a co- kind of a cool 20th anniversary thing here this we are. weekend or next weekend? Uh, that's a very good question. You know we definitely did rehearse that. Uh, I think weeks it's in two weeks. Yeah. And I know we'll be, hopefully, the plan is, is meet, we have a, we'll do that for the show in two weeks. That might be our I was Thanksgiving like, I was episode. It wasn't be this week, you know, I'm not gonna be around. No. I, hopefully, we can get Derek. I will make it out for on the show. Yeah. Twenty year anniversary. You guys so how many how many beers you got on top? A lot. Twenty. Twenty, 20 beers. Twenty beers. 20, 20 beers for twenty. So we years. have to do a uh, a suicide of Dogfish Head. Twenty beers. I can do that. Okay. In two weeks, well, we you're did, about behind the bar. When we did the when we did the one twenty uh, the one twenty yeah. uh, vertical last year at Altamont, I did uh, I chugged three. 2013 120 minutes so i'm down for a tw- I'm, I'm down for a, 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 t- a 20 jeff, beer jeff, for 20 jeff doesn't years. mess around <laughs> how that cheat you? let me go i'm gonna go give one of these to darren i'll be back in a second. all right so while jeff is is yeah we're kind of tight here we were, we were set up to do video and it, it <laughs> fell through the roof so yeah this is the dogfish heads uh higher math in celebration of their 20th uh anniversary dogfish is my favorite brewery mike is it yeah it is for the longest of all time, the land. For the longest time, that I was I was drinking a lot of 90 minute IPAs. 90 is good. I really like the 90. I don't minute like IPAs, IPAs, but I could do 90 minutes. 60 minute, not so much all the time. The 120, a little little. It's syrup, a little sweet. Syrupy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is some good beer up there. They, oh, they, they I, definitely I, know what they're doing. Yeah, I like I like Dogfish because they do some off the wall stuff, and like to me, that's what really gets my attention is like the weird beer, as I call it. But the smell on this is like almost kind of vinegar. Almost smell like a hot dog. Yeah, I mean, could yeah. Like hot, like ketchup. Ketchup. Yeah, like vinegar. It's very like it smells kind of like a sour, like a light sour, like intro sour. I don't get. Maybe I get a little bit of cherries on the nose, but I don't really get. He said chocolate, right? I don't really get a whole lot of chocolate on there. Any cherry either, but it's very maybe ketchupy. Come through, come through. Yeah, that's like a little like vinegar ish. I feel we'll like wait, I'm about we'll to eat to like a, a ballpark Frank. That's pretty good. At the at the game, mm-hmm. we'll wait till Jeff's walking back now. But yeah, curious to see what you think of the smell, uh, Jeff. As you as you sit down here, I just handed it to Darren, and he goes, "Wow, this smells delicious." I'm like, okay. All right. What do you what do you think on the smell? Because me and Mike have kind of went through it already. <laughs> He's got Jeff a weird, weird a look on his face. <laughs> it's it's different. It, it definitely, I smell mostly chocolate, which I wasn't expecting. Okay, so chocolate, and then a little bit of a little bit of cherry, but not much. I smell chocolate. Interesting, because me and Mike don't smell chocolate at all. Really, we smell ketchup and vinegar. Ketchup and vinegar. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's a Mike thing. I don't know. No, I definitely smell chocolate. <laughs> okay, yeah. a lot of maybe it. Maybe I'm not smelling. Maybe right. there's maybe so I'm much not chocolate. Smelling the right chocolate. Yeah. 
Me and the round chocolate. Wow. Oof. Oh my god. Well, that is a bold beer. I taste the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like a chocolate. You get that aroma cherry, of yeah. chocolate when you drink it. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's a rush. Like a dark chocolate covered cherry. That is one of the cooler beers that I've had. Yeah. yeah. It is That's very really interesting. Good. Definitely nothing like it. Holy moly. It's boozy. Yeah, I was just looking How, at it. I literally was it? pulling it up just because I wanted to see oh what the. Oh my god. So. This might be the strongest golden ale ever recorded, but it's 17% oh. alcohol. <laughs> Man. <laughs> that beer might have more ABV than last week when we had the aged, uh, the aged beers. Yeah, I think the highest one oh that they God. had last week was 15. This is 17. Think, yeah. You know, we just Ooh. got in our Utopias. Did we? Oh, did yeah, really? 28% this year. That's, a, that's fun. Th- that's when they blend in all of their that's uh, the same Adam's four one, beers. Right? Yeah. yeah, they blend it all together and put in a copper... Co- container yeah more or less they make a malt liquor out of everything that they make and it okay. turns into uh it, it's more or less like a if you mixed a brandy and a barley wine and then added some they some moonshine some cool to stuff it up there oh my god it's uh, rough oh rough i like it that's delicious it's good but man it packs a punch See, booziness is like my that's my game that's my thing like i love a boozy beer it's very sweet it warms you up it's like taking a shot of whiskey except it tastes I mean, better this is it i mean you can you can taste 17 percent in that it's different. I mean, well, it certainly surprised me. I was not expecting a golden oh, no, to be seventeen percent, but that's dogfish head. I mean, uh, I could maybe only have a bottle of this, and then it, I'm like, oh, well, I um, think yeah, I'm probably move, buying another bottle of this. something else. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 well, heavy. this for this will be next week's release too, guys. Yeah, this is next week. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're doing a great job selling it. Here's that bottle. As if you're terrified. You're gonna have this on tap next week. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have everything on tap for the uh, twenty beers for twenty years. With the exception of uh, Worldwide Stout, will be in bottles for that event. Okay. Um, we haven't finalized the entire lineup yet, but all the yeah. big hitters will be there. And um, we're going to have things from the Ancient Ale series. We're going to have things from the uh, from the music series. Everything that Dogfish Head has done that's kind of cool, rare, and different is going to be on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, I mean, if you've never been to a Dogfish Head event, I'm not. Make make come. plans to uh, yeah. get a ride home because yep. they do a lot of high gravity, high ABV, call, big call beers, Uber. and uh, or, or order lots of tater tots and pretzels. And I don't. <laughs> and also, definitely don't chug three with thirteen uh, one twenty minutes. Yeah. I wouldn't do that either. I, I'm probably the only idiot who thought that chugging. How three, old were they at the time? Two, well, they were two year. Uh, one, two, and three. Three year, year old. Three year yeah. old. So you're because pushing um, like what twenty percent on those? Yeah, well, we did. Uh, so it was a five-year vertical. We did 2011, 12, 13, 14, and fifteen. So we were in fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. So yeah, I guess they were like the th- th- three years old at the time. Um, it's an, it's insane. If you ever get the oh. opportunity to do a vertical event with any beer, but yeah. uh, we did it with one twenty minute. We figured that was like mainstream enough that everybody would want to do it, but mm-hmm. also rare enough that it's one of still the rarest, you know, rarest and coolest double IPAs you can get every year Um, it was amazing and to see just the different flavors that get imparted each year you try one and then you have to wait a year to try the next one then you go oh man you know you make a snap judgment oh it's not as good or it was as good or it's better or it's you know you don't really know because it's, it's, it's been right a year you since you tasted it, you know? Them. You can see how yeah. age handles the beer. And, yeah. and I mean, I'll tell you, and, and the funniest thing is you get all these different craft beer people together with all these different palettes, and everybody has a different opinion on what the best is, what the worst is. We were in a group of, uh, my, my tasting was like 16 people for that, and uh, three of us were all, all about 2013. And we thought that 2012 was the worst one out of all of them, and then like everyone else thought 2012 was the best one, and so it's just it's it it's insane because every I mean obviously all of them are good. It's one 20 yeah. minute, but you're splitting hairs. But I was like, man, this 13 might be the best beer I've ever had, yeah. and then other people were like, oh, I think that's the worst one out of all five. And like, you know, it, it just it sometimes it just kind of blows so your mind. Taste dependent. Yeah, yeah. When, everybody's what palate's to, different. What you think you like, what you think you can even taste in it. At I the mean, t- even at the just time. now, you know, me and you, Mike, me and yeah. you smell, you know, ketchup and vinegar. And you I don't know how you smell vinegar in this. I, this I thing smell, smells. Delicious. It almost smells like a sour. I told him I was literally thinking like I was about to eat like. You a, know what? It a might be. It might be. I'm, I'm yeah. drinking a sour, and then I, and so to me, <laughs> this was so much less. Sour. I'm drinking the Sir Citra. It's a fresh. Um, it's a Citra hopped sour more or less and it's uh delicious if you want to come try a sir citra but um, he's right it's it's one of the better uh sours i've had but when you switch to this and this is so much bigger and bolder oh, it, oh yeah yeah I, I don't get the sour notes at all in it i still taste ketchup i don't taste ketchup at all i taste a little smell like it. the residue is a little smell. ketchupy 
And even the aroma when I, you know, you can breathe in. As See, you have I don't mouthful. taste anything vinegary, salty, tomatoey. Nothing about that is ketchup to me. I feel like I'm gonna eat a eat a hot dog right now. Yeah, That'd be I, it, no, might well, it. it might pair well. It might pair well with a hot dog. hot dog. Get some Guinness Broad Sliders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, topic for this episode. Now that we've opened up this monster of a beer, uh, we're about twenty, a little over twenty five minutes in. Um, I went to uh, Gainesville, Gainesville, Jacksonville Beach Tuesday, Mike. I was telling Jeff earlier before you came. I went to uh, Engine 15. I don't know if you've been there. Engine yeah, 15, right. Green Room, Green mm-hmm. Room, Zeta. Went to uh, Ragtime, which isn't necessarily a brewery, but they brew beer uh, on premise. And then I went to Ancient City uh, Brewery in St. Augustine on the way back. And it's fitting that you're here on the show working at a craft brewery because my topic that I want to discuss this episode is what craft breweries should and shouldn't do in terms of of customers because i had a bad experience at one of those four the With, latter uh, of the four the front, the front end uh yeah uh bartender up there the bartender had a, okay. had a little attitude problem i didn't really appreciate that i don't appreciate sarcasm from people i don't know okay because it comes across very uh rude absolutely to sound polite yeah so she kind of rubbed me the wrong way um and then I was sold this glass here I brought as an example. As you can see, I paid full price for it. And I go, hey, can I get one of your pint glasses? Can I collect pint glasses? And she said, oh, if you can find what's wrong with it, uh, she, what's, what's she say? Uh, it'll be it'll, worth, it'll a, be lot worth a lot of money if you find what's wrong with it. And they sold it to me. Okay. Like, have you found found what was wrong with it? Yeah, the ease. The, e, the, ease, messed, up. the ease messed up. Mm-hmm. So that really irritated the living crap out of me because not only did they sell an inferior product but they knowingly sold something that wasn't up to standard and crap beer like we discussed last week is about having standards like you're absolutely. making quality right you're making you're, if you're going to charge people more you can make a quality product yeah. and provide a quality experience you don't and, charge an eight dollar beer it's all screwed up yeah or you know uh you know i talked to bobby from Bowegans and and david last week and jeff can value like if you're gonna re- brew beer don't release garbage Cause that's that doesn't look good on you. No, if it goes bad, you don't you don't put it on tap. Right. You know you screw something up. So, you know I kind of that's what my topic is for today. Cause I was I would say distraught. But I was like not happy about it, and I felt I don't know. I just I I didn't like the experience. Especially with someone that's working in the front of the house like that, you don't want at a brewery, especially like you you're gonna have a lot of regulars. Yeah. Because they're going to come back for for the product that someone else is making, and you're you're up right. in the front of the house selling that product. Yeah. Not if you don't have you, the right attitude. You cannot not. run. Yeah. You cannot run customers out of there with a bad attitude. Yeah. They're and a like, customer. And another thing, like you don't know who's walking in the door either. Like, I mean, would I say I'm an internet celebrity? I mean, no, not like Jeff, but <laughs> 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 you know. But you know, you don't know who's walking in. You don't know who they know. You don't know what they do. You don't know. You know. And if if you have an attitude, if your beer is garbage, like. I'm gonna, if people ask, I'm gonna tell them. Yeah. And you know, in defense to them, they did have a really good lineup. They had a, a creatively different lineup. You know, they had a Key Lime Colch, which I had, which was phenomenal. But it was the attitude, man. Like, the, it was in a warehouse, the tap room was legit, everything looked nice. But she had an attitude, and they showed me a gla- They, I, I paid full price for a glass that they knew was, was wrong. Screwed up. So, yeah. I mean, but on the other hand, Engine 15 was solid. I had a lot of their beers. I like Engine we were getting, 15 we, a lot. We were getting, me and my brother were getting flights. So I had their uh, uh, oh shit, uh, the coffee vanilla pumpkin beer, I believe. Um, and they had like their There's lemon shandy. Lemon shandy. Because uh, I, I have a fetish for shandies. I don't know what it is. Okay. And then, you know, and like each brewery, like Green Room, I was probably my favorite overall. Uh, I had the Count Sharkula. I had a couple of other of their beers. Um. And just the vibe from, you know, NJ15 has its own vibe. It's, it's, it smells like food. You know, Green Room had that beach vibe. If you haven't been there, very beachy. People have their dogs. They're very relaxed. Right there on the water, kind of. Uh, Zeta had their own. Like, everyone had their own. But, you know, the, the, the topic is what do you guys feel craft breweries can do, what they're doing right or what they do wrong or what they shouldn't do wrong. Another, 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 as you guys are thinking, that last brewery, the one the glass, didn't have flights. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Especially that's what the reason you go to a craft brewery a lot of times you need to, to have try flights. every yeah. try everything, try something new. You know, 
They did Without not. spending $35. It, it blew my Opportunity mind. missed. Yeah. You know? It blew my mind. I said, oh, can I get a flight? Oh, we don't sell flights. It's a huge like, opportunity no, right? missed. <laughs> so then it's like, all right, can I have samples? I only tried their vanilla porter and uh, coconut vanilla porter and their key lime, man. I'm getting the key lime Kolsch. I was like, why don't you have flights, man? Like, It's simple. It's easy. And you can sell basically samples of beer. Well, yeah. uh, speaking of, before I forget, speaking of the vanilla porter, because we tried that one last week and I told you guys I would figure out where it was from. It's from Rohrbach in Rochester, New York. Rohrbach Brewing. Um, apparently Cassie said they're one of the best. That When she goes home, they I, always I like go out to Rohrbach. It was a great vanilla porter. But now but now like, we can snap back. But I just figured I wanted to, get you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wanted to get you the information I promised you last week. So, I mean, what do you guys think crapperies are doing right? You know, if you want to name an example, that's cool. And maybe some that you had a bad experience or maybe breweries that you've went to that they should be doing that they're not doing. I, mean, I yeah. think the biggest thing that I can that I can overlook is poor service. If the beer's good. No. As long as if they're making good beer, the easy part is fixing the service. You know, you can fix right. the front of the house pretty simply. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But if you're not making good beer, you're not going to survive. Right. Not right. In this industry, you're not going to survive. Right. On the flip side, service covers bad beer covers bad beer a little bit <laughs> it, it, it does it, it does, does man because right. like uh, i'll tell you that you know i've come i've come to bars i've gone to places where the recommendations were subpar but the people were amazing and i always say like nowadays it's a service driven market because because nobody's going anywhere for just what they offer on the menu anymore right. now having great beer will bring people in sure that's absolute will you know keep them coming back but right if they get treated unfairly or wrong are they going to go back there or are they going to go get great beer at any other number of cool breweries so that I think exist a lot of people are making good beer good enough beer to get to stay you in alive. the door right yeah. and if you have good service there then you're going to have regular customers that aren't gonna service is easier to fix um so I, I do think that that is the lesser of two evils. I think obviously you want to build off of a good brand, especially when yeah. you're in the craft beer world where everything, like you said, is good. Right. Um, you know, even even bad craft beers are good beers. So like, yeah. to the most part, I've had some I've had some real doozies, but <laughs> um, but you know, even a good craft beer, you know that they made that with with love. You know, they made yeah. that with an with an intent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, people say that. You, you go in and sometimes that craft, that, that beer started with, you know, I woke up in the morning and had a craving for bacon. So I just went and made a bacon beer, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you sure you're not going to drink it that day, but like, right. that's, that's how some of these cool beers have started, Absolutely. you know? Um, and I like that. I love stories like that. But I think a, a big, big miss, you know, big miss on the small craft world is, is trying to get too big for your bridges, trying to be a little bit too full of yourself thinking yeah. that you're bigger than you're not and it, you know there's nothing wrong with being a big fish in a small pond if you want to own whatever your town you're in own it you know that's awesome someday you'll get discovered and someday you'll be big but don't don't be cocky to the point that you're driving business away because you think your beer can stand on its own against the big dogs when yeah. you haven't even done anything to prove that yet um you know even i'll go as far as saying like Funky Buddha. I've never been to Funky Buddha Brewery. I'm sure their service is incredible because they're a, they're a big brewery. They have a reputation and they need incredible service. But even Funky Buddha is not above running me out the door if right. I go in there. Right. Um, you know, and, and I don't think that they would. I think they're probably a fantastic brewery, and I I have nothing but good things to say about them. But you know, that's even on that level. Like, does their beer stand on its own against every other brewery? When you're once it's it's like there's tiers and you can be at the top of your tier but then don't get too big for your britches and think that you can now go against next tier breweries you gotta know what you're following yeah there's always another because tier if you're, if you're not a, a huge brewery and you're not being conducive to like anyone that's walking in the door you don't have the following to yeah. to be a, you know to smart off the people that walk into your brewery because exactly. you don't have enough people that are gonna write that off and just say oh well their beer's their beer's really good. Yeah, they're gonna be like, well, screw them. Well, exactly. I mean, like we just tried a dogfish head beer that that yes, it's limited release. Yes, it's not everywhere. Yeah. But if you if you were at a small brewery that had fantastic beer, you could go to any other craft brewery that has any kind of reputation, 
or any kind of craft bar that has any reputation and get this dogfish head beer that we just had, yeah. right? So even though you're not in the same tier in distribution or in popularity as Dogfish Head, you're in direct competition with them, even yeah. though you're a brewery and you're selling at your point of sale in your tiny little tap room. So like you can't you can't get that cocky because no matter what, the option is on the table to go attack a 17% golden nail with chocolate and, and cherry. Yeah. You know, so it's like there's there's never there's never a safety net in craft beer and i think a lot of problems with some of the smaller places is they feel safe because they have their small town reputation and they have their regulars and even bad service develops regulars it yeah. just develops a different kind of regular a person yeah. who likes abuse a little bit yeah. <laughs> uh, but like you're never not going to have regulars if the beer's good but right. are you are you building off of your regulars or are you dead set on these guys love us so what are we doing wrong well, you know? all your regulars gonna recommend you to everyone that they know right knowing that your service is garbage right you know? i mean it's the power of word of mouth you it know is. and and absolutely i think everything has to be on point in order to succeed in this industry yeah i think some breweries want to be the little fish in the big pond and some breweries want to be that big fish in a small pond yeah. and how you go about that tactic really you know depends on if your beer is really good and there's or not. there's really nothing wrong with either approach it's just owning that approach and being yeah. what it is you know i mean how many breweries are small fish in the giant pond of craft beer yeah. so many you know even notable breweries are small fish you look at yingling and yingling is is you know the oldest brewery in america and, and they're small. only they're only east of the mississippi yeah, yeah. you know and yeah. it's like that's that was the big thing i grew up in florida man drinking yingling as a kid and I moved out to the Midwest, and you can't find it. They have it. no idea what it is. You can't, you they can't don't get even it know. anywhere out there. And I was like, what do you mean? Uh, you know, you, you buy tons of yingling in Florida, and all, all up and down it's the East Coast. And you every neighborhood gas it. station has yingling. Yep, you cannot get Bottles it Bottles and cans. Well, I had, yeah. I had a general manager of a world of beer out in Austin, Texas, come to my store in Altamont. And he was like, please, God, tell me you have yingling. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was, like, laughing because I'm yeah, like, like huh, yingling? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, of course yeah. we have Yingling, you know, like why wouldn't we have Yingling? It's yeah, I mean it's like like one of the number one beers in the country yeah. to in my opinion, you know, like what right. I know, it's like one of the best selling beers ever. And he's like he's like if I go back to Texas with this point, I'll be the only one in Austin with this point. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, "Are you serious?" And he's like, "Dude, they don't it doesn't distribute to us. It nope. doesn't distribute for, east for of the Mississippi reason, River." It, it doesn't go east. But they're they're they, go, they go are west. dead set on what they're you know what they do and they're like i want to be a small fish in the big pond because i own the east coast so why do i care yeah you know i mean it's it's like, they're, yeah they i mean i'm sure bills. i'm sure the west coast has their version of the yingling as well the midwest has probably have, has theirs too mm -hmm. and just distribution and, and all that stuff it's so like is it yingling coming out with a new beer <laughs> that'd be I think amazing they, I think to they me are. you mean cool. guinness just came out with an ipa I have not had Everybody's that. coming out with something new. Yeah. You, they have to. All these big companies have to do something. Budweiser has been doing it for years trying to compete with all these other little things that they're pulling out. And then out. they disappear after three months. Yeah, because <laughs> no one goes, to, I'd rather go buy a real craft beer well, yeah, I buy mean, Budweiser's version of Bud Light Platinum. Platinum. An IPA or bad. Platinum. Yeah. I don't like that at all. You can still get what was that. the uh, Guinness Blonde? Yeah. Oh, that was, that uh, was an interesting uh, one. That did not. They do what a Black Crown they I, do one of. Basically, just like Black take Crown, I could I could drink Black Crown. Yeah. It was the Platinum. I wasn't. This is very ricey. Yeah. But I'm like, I buy Budweiser when I want to chug beer. Or Bud Select. Yeah, but hidden select. hidden gem. Bud Select. <laughs> and the Anheuser Busch <laughs> is Bud Select. I I like Bud Select. It works. It works. It's lower in calories if you're counting calories. Which I am clearly not. I don't know. But it has the full flavor. Anyway, uh, I don't want to get on Bud Select here. It's a crap beer show, Mike. What, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Which one's the champagne of beers? Uh, Miller High Life. High yes. Life, of course. <laughs> the worst one you could possibly Champagne buy. of Miller beers. Miller Light's the worst one you can get. No, probably, yeah. I, Miller no, Light's well, bread. In my opinion, and I'm I'm sure I'm offending a billion ears right now, but Bud Light's the worst beer on the planet Earth. <laughs> I, I, I disagree. Miller, yeah, Light. Miller Light. Miller Light, Light thank you. Miller Light is way worse than Bud Mike, Light. Me and Mike are in it, man. Yeah, the mics you're are by on, yourself. The mics are on a team right now. Yeah. Bud Light will be my 1,000th point at World of Beer <laughs> because <laughs> because I have I have made that conscious decision to say it, it, a 1,000 is my, you know, in my even, mind, it's like my last beer. It's not going to be my last beer at World of Beer, but it's it's like that's where the journey ends. And I don't it's think like, you're going to be able to make <laughs> that first, happen. My first beer, Bud Light. I don't think Light. World of Beer has a Bud Light. My first, we do. We have Bud do Light. Do you really? Yeah, we uh, do. Uh, keep it hush hush. Uh, uh, don't say uh, that too loud. But wait, yeah, wait. we do have it. So, uh, 
so I, you, in you my get mind, judge when you buy it. It's FYI. the first. <laughs> it's the first beer. Sure. It's the first what, beer. What, it will be guy. the last point, even though it's not my last point. But it'll be my last point on my journey to a thousand. And it is genuinely, in my opinion, the worst beer on earth. I hate it. I hate it <laughs> with we'll, a passion. We'll have, to, we'll have to go into the worst beer, you know, another time. Bud Light. Oh. <laughs> Bud Light was actually my 100th beer here. Was it? Yeah. Mine was Coors Light. My 50th was the Beard's Beard uh, for Rogue. The Beard Beer. Okay. Yeah, that was my 50th. What about Beard Envy by Red Brick? Never had it. Oh, interesting beer. So Tastes like cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Jeff, you sold me. <laughs> right. You want to drink this beer that tastes like cheese? I Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, brewer's beard yeast used in the beer yeah. tastes like cheese. Don't drink it. <laughs> <That's> disgusting. <laughs> so what? Uh, we kind of went off there a little bit. Is it beard cheese? It's beard, beard, beard and cheese. Envy. Or he said, uh, oh, yeah, that one. I know the rogues, they used the brewer's beard yeast. Yeah, that's what they did with their oh, beard envy. Did, yeah, and I'm, I'm like wondering to myself when I hear these weird things, I'm like, how is that like like legal? Awesome. Yeah. Like how like how has the uh, FTC not come down and said like you can't be putting people's beards in your beer, you know like, <laughs> and I'm like where do they draw the line? Are we gonna get like we gonna get like Big Billy's I mean, belly you, button yeast you beer cook, soon? You, you like cook it, it it's <laughs> it's sterile. What what's what gets me is people are like oh my god they put his beard in the beer it's like oh my god, <laughs> no no god no come on. Yeah, they actually just filter the beer through his beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get all the There's sediment a out. Hairs, it's yeah. not our fault. It's, not it's bottled that way. So, well, I mean, go back to the topic, <laughs> not beards, beard or whatever. What do you guys? What do you guys? I mean, in your experiences, you know, what have breweries done right? What have they done wrong? Uh, well, I mean, we talked about hourglass last time and, and I told you that's a place where you go and, and you get treated right and everybody's nice to you and, and you just have that good point of service. Um, a lot of times getting big and, and moving to a new facility is really cool. Mm -hmm. They did a great job with theirs, but there was something cool and intimate about what they used to do in that house. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I think like maybe the right move for you is to take a second and, and kind of chill where you're at and do, you know, there's something just really cool when you go into a, a bar and it's just different. And, and sometimes that's kind of what the craft beer world's about yeah. is just being different. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it seems like a lot of times some of these, these smaller breweries or even bigger breweries have a very cookie cutter tap room, cookie cutter approach. They want to be a bar. They want to make everything visible, everything, you know, and like, yeah, I get that you're copying, you know, a, a, Thing that's worked but Someone else's structure. sometimes yeah. it's just cooler to be way different and off the walls you know like i i tell people about this bar all the time it's not a craft beer bar so i'm getting off topic once again like always but you know i went to a bar one time in new orleans and it was a vampire bar and it was built into a cave and you walk in and it's just loud music ricocheting off stone walls and wow and it's just like it was so bizarre and different that I'm literally like blown away by it. And I'm like, I, I will never go to a bar like that again. Yeah. And even though like, if I go to new Orleans, I will go back to that exact bar again, yeah. but like, I'm never going to find another bar like a that. Bar. Hell no. So like, so like that's kind of where I think a lot of cool craft brewers have gone above and beyond is to make their tap room and make their point of sale for their beers different and interesting and something that resonates with you. Um, for instance, two Henry's who I tooted their horn last week a little bit, like, you go into two Henry's, they're also key and curly wine. So you walk into their tap room and one side is a winery bar with all yeah. their wine and cider. Cool. The other side is all their craft beer. And you walk into this room and it's almost like it's split, like a like battle of the you know, wine versus beer. Yeah. And and people sit at either bar and like with their backs <laughs> to each other. Yeah. And it seems weird, but it's like really cool because you're just yeah. like you get to choose your side and then yeah, you battle, yeah. you know? Pick your side. And then like they have this outside patio with a big fountain and a in a little retention pond. But they mm. took they took what was a, rep a retention pond and made it something cool and interesting. Right. And like it's just like places like that that kind of flip the script on their on their image and make it a little right. bit different mm -hmm. it's just like that resonates with people that's something that's cool that like i like going to that tap room because i connect with that tap room so you're you're more on atmosphere absolutely what really sells you something with uh with the small small places growing into bigger places um a lot of the time like up in uh, up in gainesville before they moved to the new location swamp head yeah had a really cool location and they were always willing to like walk you through it down in orchid island like 
our 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 brew house is right behind the tap room, and we're able to like there's just a it's just roped off. As long as someone's in there, they can walk you in there and show you exactly what's going on. And when you get bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, you go to bigger breweries and it's almost like you need to schedule a tour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Whereas, whereas down a smaller place, you can kind of just poke your head in and, like, and be like, hey, what's going on? And someone will, someone will be there to tell you what's going on. Right. Um, and I think that's really cool and it's something that you kind of lose as you grow. Yeah. Absolutely. You I can, I can agree with that. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you get a bigger brewery and it's like, well, now you can't just stick your head in and wander around. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, some of them that are really cool to me, um, I mean, you walk into to Cuesta, who I talked about last week. Their tap room is real small. All their brewery equipment is exactly like you said. You get to the end of the bar, and there's a rope across it, and there's their bre- where they're brewing. Everything smells like mash. It smells like all the ingredients. Yeah. You smell fresh hops in the air when you're in that building. Yeah. Um, Hourglass has glass walls up around their uh, around their brewing facility. So mm-hmm. when you're at the bar, you can look to your left and you see the tons. You see everything. Everything they're doing. Um, it's very cool. Like, I mean, I went to Cigar City. Their facility is way too big to do that. You yeah. can't, you're not going to have the tap room adjacent to one of their five, you know, brewing rooms or anything like that. Um, but you take the tour and you get to see it all. And that's really cool. And you can't do that on a big level like Cigar City. Yeah. But sometimes you don't have to take that leap just yet and go into that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, some breweries have done, and I've seen it done well. Keep the original small tap room. Keep brewing beer out of there, and then get another facility where all your kegging and bottling is done. Yeah, and they have a tap room too over there. But yep. but the original, staying the original. That's the and plan that's in Orchard Island. Awesome. In a couple that's years, the way to do it. In a couple of years, we're going to move into a larger facility, but we're keeping the original tap room. Yeah, we're keeping the original brew house because that's where it all started, and it's cool. And those will be our pilot batches. Yep. Instead yeah. of doing five gallon pilot batches in five years, we'll be doing a hundred gallon pilot batches. You know, and that's where you, you just move up the ranks as far and as... And then what's really cool about doing that is now you already have your set facility where you can do your really cool one-offs in small batch because you already started with small batch. You know, you yeah. started with the smaller equipment. Yep. So now, yeah, release your core brands, release everything out of your new facility. You have, you know, 100, 200 gallons. You do whatever you want big right. over there. Yeah, then yeah, you yeah. got... Then you got your little small stuff over at the original store where you can do all your baby. You know, that's my baby. That's what I want. I want to release something really cool, but I'm going to do it small and I'm going to release it right in my tap room, right there in the yeah. same building. Only fresh. There. Just yeah. came off, you know, like just came off the line. Right yeah. Out of the Hook it up. Tank. We, sometimes we'll be pouring, pouring glasses of beer out of the bright tank. Yeah. Be, I know Cigar be, City has done kegged. that when I went on their, their, their it be brewery tour. We'll they we'll pouring it right out of the can. Yeah. And we'll be like, all right, well, we got to. We're coming back into the brew house, and you're you're filling glasses out of the bright tank. Yeah. You know what's something else I saw that was really cool? Now that we're talking about small breweries, I actually don't even remember the name of this brewery. Um, it might have been Sunshine State Brewing, which is funny because it's in Denver, <laughs> and we're in and we're in the Sunshine State right now. But um, but they uh, it might have been them. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But they had a board up in their brewery, giant chalkboard. It had every one of their beers on tap day it was brewed day it was released so you knew exactly what you were drinking from how long it's been on yeah and it was really i I had a imperial red ale that was brewed and released the day prior to me being there and it's just like i was just like man that's that's like i know this beer is fresh and then you go to places like yard house where they have like i don't know a hundred and something beers on tap tap, something like that and and i'm thinking to myself None of these are fresh because once you get to that many taps, you're competing against yourself. Yeah. Every one of those and taps many, becomes how many less kegs utilized. Are every night when you have that many. Right. One, two, because yeah. because you know if if you get the same volume as any other bar and you're splitting that amount of beer between 150 taps instead of 40 that taps. That beer's sitting that's, there a while. That beer's yeah. sitting there forever. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I I can taste the difference. I know that, but I'm you know I'm drinking craft beer constantly i work at a bar so you know but the people who probably don't drink craft beer all that regularly probably never taste the difference but i know i'm drinking a beer that's old and especially when you get some of the they have freaking 30 ipas on an ipa once you tap that has like a week before it starts tasting funky yeah so you know if that ipa is sitting on there for two three weeks because it's competing with 149 other taps yeah that's you know that's a problem in itself that's, and that's the example of being too big for what you're trying to be. Right. Absolutely. You have so many taps. I mean, how many other, you know, there's a lot of bad beers in there. 
I mean, unless it's Bud Light you know, or Coors Light, that's where it's gonna be. Last six months, you know, contact. yeah, the, yeah the, you won't t- be able to tell the difference. The most, <laughs> I mean, the most you can really do, unless you're doing, you know, fifteen thousand dollars in sales a night or something. The most you can really do is about 40, 50 taps, because after that, like you should, you should have a goal of blowing, you know, ten percent of your tap lineup every night. Yeah, you because to, uh, if mansion? you're not, then it's going bad. Yeah, where Man- is it? Mansion in Melbourne? No. Never heard of it either. They have about 70 beers on tap. They have the most impressive bottle selection downstairs that I've seen in a very long time. If you ever get a chance to go out, it's called Mansion. Mansion Mansion. in in Melbourne? In Melbourne. Uh, They have... Vero in Melbourne. We're going. All right. There's actually another another brewery opening up in in Vero as well right now. It's called Walking Tree. It's another kid that I grew up with. Um... They, they're, they're more production, like heavy production side, but they're working on some sours down there that are very good too. So, you know, you go to Vero and it's not just, it's not just Orchid Island. There's, there's going to be a few breweries in the next year. It's East Coast, like I say, East Coast is popping. You can go you up know? there and, and Daytona, you know, Playa Linda. You go to a couple breweries in one town. Playa good. Now, yeah. now it's not, now it's just like, you're not making a trip for one place. You're making a trip for Florida like Beer Company. Yep. And there's a lot of solid breweries around the East Coast that yep. are really overlooked just because of, they're not Tampa. They're not Miami. They're not yep. Jacksonville. They're not. But I mean, these smaller beach towns in Florida. Yeah. It's, it's so it's really cool. It's really cool. Stuff. Yeah, Jeff, you're more on you're more on atmosphere. Oh, absolutely. Mike, what are you more on for craft breweries? What do you? Atmosphere is obviously important, man. I'm not gonna hang out with at a place that I, you know, I'm not. I don't feel comfortable. Right. Um, but I'm also if I don't like the beer. So you're more the, of the, the beer, beer side. The beer is gonna get me there. Okay. The What's atmosphere. Keep you there? The atmosphere yeah. is gonna keep me there. Right. Uh. Because you can find good beer all over the place. Yeah. Especially all these breweries. They're making their own beer, but they're serving other people's beer as well. You know, there, there's Funky Buddha beer on tap at all these other microbreweries all over the state. They're, you know, they have good beer that's made by other breweries. Yeah. So you can find good beer anywhere. Yeah. Um, but if they run you out with terrible service... Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a balance. It's a really yeah. big balance yeah. that, you it's know... It's all important. You know, working in the in an industry like like in a bar industry, like you're not gonna get smiling faces every time you go in, but like, hot damn man, just control the attitude. Like, yeah. just if you're having a bad so day, that's service, fine. I can normally beer, you can tell. I'm atmosphere. <laughs> normally you can tell something. And like, I'm not gonna say anything to you. Oh, what having a bad day? But just don't be sarcastic about it. Like, yeah. You're work, you are, you work at a bar. Like you should be able like, to I'm paying you swallow your... what happened yesterday and, and get rid of your attitude in order to serve your customer. Yeah, They're like, gonna. I'm here to give you my money. Yeah. You know what's a cool? Don't run me out of your building. Yeah, like yeah. a cool a cool spot. It's not a, it's not a brewery, to my knowledge. They might. I know they had intentions to brew eventually, but over in Sanford, Celery City. Have you ever been to Celery yeah, City? Uh, I've been there a lot. Celery yeah. City is awesome, so amazing, and uh, I actually know Paul, the owner. I, I knew him through a different life and a different job, but uh, good, <laughs> good guy, really awesome life. guy. Uh, he actually is uh, the owner of West End, West End yeah. and West End's a great time if you ever in the area uh, and just feel like just having the time of your life. Go to West End, but um, Celery City. So like, there is craft brewing down in Sanford. There's actually a craft brew store down in Sanford. Everybody is kind of in the craft beer world in that in that area it's all small breweries small bars everything is very small yeah. batch feel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and celery city really nailed that nailed it you know you come in and it's very small but it's yeah. very different they have the tap handles all up all over the walls and they celery have sticks well yeah the celery sticks are the are the actual tap handles for the taps <laughs> yeah. behind the bar so if you want to see what tap handle it is they actually have the corresponding tap handle for each number behind you on the wall that's a great idea. And so great idea. And then they also have a list of, you know, one through I think they have yeah. 30, 30, ta- 30 something uh, in the thirties. Uh yeah, and they have two wine taps. And um and so you check the list and it has, you know, tab one is this and you and you just kind of reference the list. Basically, I mean the point of sale isn't on the tap handles and the focus is on the fact that they are using celery sticks as their tap handles. Right. And it's kinda of funny and it's just something it's different cool. and it's cool. They have all brass. It's very, it's very homey faucets. too. You walk in and everything's mm-hmm. wood. The back yep. of the tap handles is it looks like like brass. Yeah, brass. Everything's brass, brass behind the bar. Um, outside, they have an outdoor patio. When you walk to the back, where it's all like you know the beer signs and low lighting, like like what we have here, and mm-hmm. it's very, 
in the middle of Sanford, man, like around the corner yeah, from Willow Tree. Like, but it's just they have all, the wall. yeah, they have Willow Tree, wall. which is so big in the German beer and German food world. And right, literally, like the next street over, they've got this little tiny place called Celery City, and it's like so different and so unique and so cool. And yeah. it's like that's the kind of place. Like for me, that's atmosphere. I went in there in the middle of the day. They had you know. Somebody had a dog in the building. I had my dog with me. We just had a good time. It's like right. nobody made you feel weird. Nobody made right. you feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, they didn't. You don't go into some craft beer bars and they're very pretentious about you know what they what they know versus what you know. And sometimes I like to like mess with them a little bit and act like I don't know anything just Take to see how <laughs> just to see how I get treated. Yeah. You know, like hey, I, I don't really know that much. What can you offer me and see what they say? Just yeah. you know, if they want to take you through craft yeah. beer, they can. If they don't, then they don't. Yeah. Um, but like Celery City, man, he's just like, he asked all the right questions. The guy was real knowledgeable. He he instantly could tell just by my answers, like, okay, you kind of know what you're talking you know, about. Yeah. So let's get you this, you know, and I got, I ended up getting a, uh, the Nib Smuggler by Funky Buddha. Great um, kind of cocoa nib, sweet brown ale, I think. I'm pretty sure. Porter, maybe. I don't know, but fantastic beer. Either way, they release it once a year. Um, but he, you know, he kind of deduced what I needed and what I wanted based off of a few easy questions. And yeah. And, uh, you know, just because I was playing the amateur didn't mean that I didn't want a great beer. Yeah. So that's another thing that a lot of these breweries need to focus on is, is uh, you know, an amateur doesn't mean he doesn't appreciate quality. It's just maybe he doesn't know what he wants. He's not knowledgeable yet. You know? You know, yeah, I'm, the right people, person behind the bar. Yeah, you take that person and say, you know, what do you like in beer? What's your flavor profiles? Do you like malts? Do you like hops? Do you like this? And, and kind of steer them in the right direction. You might find out that person loves 120 Minute. You know, yeah. like... And they might, that may be the first beer they ever had, but they might love it. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a good point. I think Celery City uh, nails, you know, hits the nail on the head in terms of, of craft brewery, what what it is. And it's, it's a whole, like, if you don't know what you're looking for, you walk right past it. Yep. Well, and, you, one of the things that goes overlooked from people that aren't in the industry right now is that uh, craft brewers are friendly to each other. Mm-hmm. They share, oh, yeah. They share They don't see this competition. If you, ask, if you ask another craft brewer about this type of beer or what they did, what their methods were, they'll usually tell you honestly most oh, yeah. of what they did. Yeah, and, and then they'll try to make a collaboration. Keep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They'll try to work collaborations. They're all about it. That's like what, something that's really cool about this industry is they're – People aren't trying to keep everything a secret. They're like, no. well, I figured out this really cool method of making sours. Yeah. And when someone comes up to them and asks them, they're usually they're they're very open about Oh yeah. It's almost like it's like they want to help you, but they also want to kind of like get that method out there so that there's great beer that's not theirs, you know? Like they want they want to have they want to try whatever you make with that method. Yeah. And that's see what I, that's if it's good, and, you know. And if all right, so if I tell you A plus B, you're gonna figure out B plus C, and, and then, then maybe I'll tell me come back. back to me, yeah. and I'll figure out, you know, D plus E. Yeah, you know, like something that I didn't even think of that now I'm able to think of because you took it a step further. Yeah, and and even the craft breweries that I've talked to don't view other craft breweries as competition. Huh? Like, oh yeah, the guys over at so and so, oh yeah, they're good buddies of mine. Oh, I We're know. We're happy that. to see and another brewery opening. Yeah, Euro. every brewer, craft brewery, like head brewer, always. Oh yeah, well I think Sanford can use more breweries. Absolutely, I'm like yeah. you don't see that as competition. He goes, absolutely not. No. Or you know wherever the Castleberry, whatever it is. A lot of them are doing different things too. If, like if you're specializing in IPAs and they're special in specializing in sours or stouts or something like that. Like, yeah, it, they'll it view each com- other's competition it all back, at all. It's it all weird. It comes back around. People want to drink as much good beer as they can. Yeah. Uh, so it's really hard to look at it as a competition. You know? And and to go along with that, like when I went to Bowegans a couple weeks ago, like Bobby was t- almost telling me his recipe. Yeah. I was like, you don't need to say that on the show. Like he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> This, you know, I do this at this point, I do that at that point, and at the end, I, do, I get this gravity, and then I'm like, you're, you don't really need to give out your recipe for, like, I'm, that's not what I'm interested in. Like, he's oh, well, and like, every brewery, they're like, they're all, about yeah. It. Oh, yeah, you want to, here's here's the exact malt I use, here's the hop I use. This is where I here's did a, it. This is where I did it, here's yeah. a time frame I added in at this point, and like, and they're, cool. they're more than willing, oh, yeah, so-and-so's cool. opening down the street, you know, I don't. I don't care. It's better for the industry. Better for the industry. Yeah. yeah, there's so few very like proprietary brewing methods. A Nobody lot of even started cares. Out as guys just brewing beer in their garage. A garage basement. It's all a hobby, yeah. and so they're like, "Oh, if it grows, awesome! I have better. I have more places to go drink beer now." Well, yeah, it's, besides it's also, my own business. Yeah, <laughs> it's also <laughs> funny too. It's like, do you know how many of these brewers have come from the same brewing circles? Then yeah. ended up being brewmasters at different breweries. It's like there's a ton of stories of people who have either jumped between breweries and helped out two different breweries, or 
or came and, and like you said, your buddy's opening up a brewery in, in Vero, and it's like you guys came from the same brewing circle. You yeah. probably the he's two, probably learned from you. You probably two, learned from the, him. You the, know, it's or- like Orchid Island and the guy who's opening Walking Tree. They went to high school together with my yeah. older brother. They started brewing beer together as a hobby. And they ended up owning two separate breweries. Yeah, and it's yeah. there's so many stories of that. It's cool. It's really I mean, cool. Stanford Brew, uh, Homebrew Shop, you know, they teach the, you know brewing classes. There's at least three or four breweries that I know that the people who started those breweries learn how to brew beer from Stanford Homebrew Shop. I love that store. I'm, I'm never, I've always walked by. I've never we walked get, in. We but. get all, we, oh, not all. We get a lot of our randling stuff from them. Yeah. Um, I did uh, I did a randall with Dogfish at 60 Minute with white wine soaked oak chips and some fresh citra hops and some oh, wow. uh what else now? is it pineapple it was fantastic yeah, it was <laughs> so i mean just, so good just hearing that but yeah i mean yeah, we I went and we, we got our we got our oak chips there we got our hops there the guy i, I went in and was like this is kind of my general idea what i want to do guide me through it you know and he was giving me every suggestion he's like you know i wouldn't use this hop i'd use this hop because it's going to impart more flavor at this you know in a randall you want everything to be imparted quickly right yeah. um and that's yeah, that's the challenge with there. oak yeah. you know i wanted to do an oak chip but oak doesn't impart flavor right away and he was like well you know what will take that oak flavor and put it in your beer quickly soak it in wine because you're going to get your wine that comes through mm. but the wine is going to have oak flavor into it so yeah. you kind of are using the wine as a conduit to, to impart flavors quickly right um and it, it was i mean it came out fantastic really great thing and i would have never known to do that if i hadn't gone there and asked the right questions uh, yeah it's it's so mind-blowing how people brewers view the industry someone is always doing something that you didn't think of oh yeah, yeah. it's yeah. there's so much outside of the box thinking because you can you can do anything. You do really anything. You can do anything. Anything under the sun. Amanda's Matt. back. Hi, Amanda. Uh, yeah, you can take these. Like the other day, I had a I had a beer from Tommy Knocker that it was a it was a wheat beer that was they use lemongrass. I never had anything like that before. Lemongrass wheat. It was it was decent. I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but it was decent. But what I was kind of thinking of recently is uh, when when you brew something, beer and you. And you use like a, <laughs> a hot pellet or like a whole cone. Yeah. Could you do some type of like organic extraction? I don't know how much experience you guys have brewing beer, but no zero zilch. But like an extract, like an like an oil or like a CO two oil that you can dissolve like in your mash tun or, or in your boil kettle. Um, I'm kind of trying to. Ex- I'm sure whenever we can get I'd a brewer like on the see. show, I think that would be a good question we can ask you know him is about oils. You know what would be amazing is if somebody could figure out a way to put actual maple syrup in a beer. But apparently you can't do it. Just, like, <laughs> just, just dump a gallon of maple syrup? Yeah, but apparently it's not possible. It apparently might not dissolve. Maple, maple doesn't, like maple, something about it, it doesn't work in beer. Well, I wonder if you can treat it. Yeah, that's well. That's how you that's always get the maple. Yeah. Like yeah. maple bacon porter is a treatment. But yeah. Um, but you can't actually brew with maple syrup, and I'm like, I want somebody to figure that out, like now, <laughs> yesterday. We need to have a brewer on the show. We can ask him. Because that would be a good idea. Yeah. With stuff. yeah, I'm brewing beer uh, next month for the uh, Deland Craft Beer Festival, okay. which I'll be. So I'll do like a fruity fruit wheat, but I want to do passion fruit, but I think it's out of season. Yep. So I have to I have to think of something else. It's hard. I mean, you, you, oh, no, you got to find someone who's been doing it for a long time. Even our head brewer right now has been doing this for about a year. So he's experimenting as he goes. Yeah. He's learning as he goes. Um, maybe a guy from like Cigar City or you know, like one of these bigger breweries that yeah. might have more experience under his belt. And, I mean, I mean, you might have to make some phone calls to other breweries too. Just I know, yeah, like, I know. Um, Bo Wiggins and I, they do a collab with Hourglass. I think they were doing a collab that's coming out soon. Uh, Funky Buddha did one with another brewery recently, and they're all you know teaming up together to make something different. I think that's pretty. Cigar cool. City does like thirteen of them a year with yeah. everybody from all I, over I, the I country. Just, I just wish they were you know make it more readily available. <laughs> I mean, they do ones with like bizarre breweries. They did one with Five Rabbit last year. It was uh, some kind of. Uh, I know the. Uh, I don't even remember. Was it Terrapin and Cigar friend. City did this? Uh, what's that pie one that everyone went ape shit over? The Southern Pecan Pie or? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. So it was something like that, the, or the Southern. Yeah, it was Southern Pecan or. You know what whatever you mean, it like, was. Pers- I'm sure we'll get Persimmon corrected. Persimmon Hollow, a little Persimmon Hollow did one, one of your with, favorite breweries. We did one with Terrapin. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know what's funny? Like you said, he goes, you know, some people figure out things and then they, they tell another brewery about it. So Persimmon Hollow could not distribute their beer because by the time it got to the breweries, it was it was already funky. It was bad. Okay. And they figured it out that the the, uh, the particular yeast they were using uh-huh. didn't travel well. It gets, okay. in, gets in the truck, yeah. warms up, starts shaking around in the back of the truck, gets okay, out, yeah. and then next thing you know, the beer is already bad a, a few hours later. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Terrapin actually told them that. It was like, you need to change your yeast. And they did, and now their beers travel well all of a sudden. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, guess what? You just <laughs> you just made your beer, you just made a competitor's beer fresh, you know? But it's like, they do that. Yeah. It, it's, 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 to me, it's so cool. But like, one of the things I look for when I go in a, in a craft brewery specifically is their tap list. And to me, their tap list can say a lot about what they are and what they stand for. For example, I went to. A clear example. I went to Boegas. I know I talk about Boegas a lot, but I remember their tap list. Yeah, I don't bash you Very for it every time you bring it up, like Persimmon Hollow. <laughs> Listen, go to Boegas and we'll talk later. <laughs> I went to Boegas, like I always, like I've been saying nonstop, and they have, at the time, they had five of their own beers on tap, but they have twelve taps total, and the other seven taps were nothing but Florida beers. I love that. And like to me, that says a lot more about what that brewery stands for than like oh well we have you know 15 taps 10 of them are ours that i have uh i have bud light i have yingling i have I so have on and so every forth single Blue Moon, whatever right? brewery that has a mainstream beer that's in distribution yeah and, and to me like that's the one thing i look for. i mean atmosphere is important to me too but looking at breweries tap list really can say a lot about them you know like cigar city has a crap ton of beers I, th- I think all so they sell is many beers. like, and that makes you worry. Like they have so many beers, like, is the quality there? Oh, I for mean, example, the cucumber saison, not pickles. a fan at all. It definitely tastes like pickles. Pickles, pickles? Like, it's gar- like it tastes I like, like pickles. I give them credit for the effort yeah, and the creativity of using really, cucumbers. Really, really stoked on Bird Island. If you go down there, and make but it. that they cucumber saison. What I'm talking about right now is, is pretty much, and there's a kitchen. We got Chef Ed up there makes some some killer dishes. Second class to Wob's Kitchen. What's that? Second class, the World Beer's Kitchen. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that you have, have you had the beer battle apple slices? No, I, ha- I have. <laughs> this guy, this guy's run run some like serious restaurants in the past. I mean, Thomas is and, pretty. You know, has yeah. the, the chef experience. Went Cordon Bleu and yeah, makes a, a mean pretzel, man. All right, and some flatbreads and burgers. Hey, hey, go down there and check it out. He <laughs> makes our Chimay job. Burgers he and makes sliders our, and he makes our sausages. job real easy because yeah, uh, that's the, I mean because I love we that, never man. have complaints about food except they're not being enough. Yeah, that's the only complaint we ever get. Oh, I wish there was more. That's a good complaint. Yeah, it's you a good complaint to have. Good, you have, you have funny like funny like sayings, and uh, the one earlier was my favorite. Like craft beer is like you no, know, yeah, it's like drink craft beer. What's craft beer like? It's like drinking out of a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I never heard that before, but yeah. man, I love that. Yeah, analogy. you learn it. You learn that, it, man. You get so much so quick. And hit it, like, yeah, hit it all yeah. at that's once. That's a good so shirt. Much we should make that a shirt. Yeah. Craft beer is like Drink, drinking out of a fire hose, except we'll make it coming out of a keg. Yeah, that'd be cool. Got some other ones, man. So, we I just mean, made we just made a million dollars on a shirt. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm behind the bar, but yeah, yeah. To me, like a trap beer list, like if they had nothing but like Celery City, for example, has like a lot of local stuff. And when they first opened, and they had kind of like the general stuff, you know, we have some crap beer, and then we have other things. And then like a couple months in, about like six months in the opening or whatever, like they specifically mentioned, we were making more of an effort to have Florida beers. And ever since they made that effort, till you know, I don't know how long it's been, but till now, like they have a lot more. Florida beers than when they had when they opened or like yeah. Bo- Bowegans have nothing but Florida like their own or Funky Buddha you might get two Henry's here and there and, and, and Tomoka is the same thing I went to Tomoka we're trying to keep a whole bunch of Florida beer on tap yeah Wobs Hops has, yeah. has they have their beers and then they have they have uh, uh, oh my god Motor Motorworks a couple times you know they have all local stuff well I think I mean I I'm, might be mistaken I know this was a couple years ago that I heard this but I think we're in the the second fastest growing craft market our state i believe it second fastest I growing i don't think we're a second in this country but uh, i believe we're top four or five in the country as far as our craft market statewide statewide yeah and um there's no excuse not to have local stuff you're in, you're in florida man it's summer nine yeah. months a year i would yeah. even push 10 months lately 
Gee, it's I mean, November. Crap, it's, yeah, it's 95 degrees like in November. Yeah. Degrees today. Yeah. That, that's still summer to me. Um, I know last year I went out for Halloween. I was freezing my butt off. This year I thought the same thing. I was sweating. <laughs> it's like 100 degrees on Halloween. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And I even shaved my head thinking that would cool me down. Yeah, with that sweet haircut you got. Hey, this is a sweet haircut, all right? I wish we had video today so the viewers could all comment oh, on how stupid You guys don't have video? No. No. Yeah, no. This we is going to we be the first week. Okay. We're going to do it today, but, you know, it, it didn't work out. Where's this load up to? Uh, YouTube. Uh, iTunes and Stitcher. Okay. Now put on Facebook, other Facebook and, and, and Twitter. Yeah, I'll give you my card. We can, we can you can uh, hit out. me up and I'll I'll send it to you. All right, cool. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have it up by tonight or tomorrow at the latest. But um, I mean, what are okay? So we both, uh, I guess, all agree on atmosphere is, is important. I'm more along the draft list. Jeff, you're more atmosphere. I'm all about and Mike, you're more about man. atmosphere could, and, and beer. It's a like, combination, but it's but not that I could care less about there. beer. Yeah. I obviously love beer, but. That's not what gets me back in. Um, I've gone to a ton of places that are subpar draft lineups, but there's something I like, you know, or there's something that's passable. But like, I just love being there. I, yeah. That's what I'm. That's all I'm about. You know, it's a dimension that we didn't really cover is like using the beer that you make in the kitchen. Yes. If you're making, if you're making idea, your yeah. own food and you're using your beer in the dishes that you're serving, is that's something that's really unique and it's it's really kind of cool to be like oh well this has this beer in it that we made we don't yeah. we don't have our own beer here but we yeah. do a lot of beer in the kitchen mm-hmm. everything is a beer. lot of it's everything's local too beer in the infused too. our beer cheese has a local brown ale our waffles have a belgian golden in them uh yeah. literally into the batter um i mean everything on our menu is infused with some beer here or there even our chicken breast is beer brine chicken breast it's like, yeah. one of the really cool things i was we out in california beer on everything, it's really man. good yeah sierra nevada's brewery Oh, I didn't California. go there. I wish I went That's there. That's a great place, and they make their beer cheese with their torpedo IPA. Uh, they they put their beer cheese on one of their burgers. They they use their beer for everything. It's really it's really. I'm cool. sure it saves them on cost too, I'm instead of having to you know yeah. buy x they amount of. Buy anything from anywhere. Food That's actually the, one of the cooler breweries I've ever been to. They have a. I hear really no good. No doubt, they're one of the, what, I think they're number one or two, they so they must whole, be pretty good. <laughs> the whole field, they have acres outside their brewery where they're growing. I think hops, they grow their own hops, hops yeah. Hops, hops and weed. Yeah. Yep. Hops and right weed. Right outside the brewery, you go park in the parking lot. And one side. I think they're green one too. Side, I think they power the their own facility. The whole parking lot's covered in solar panels. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Just I think that's. I think that's the next big it's thing really coming cool. to craft breweries is it's becoming really cool. that's a cool uh, independent like that. Oh, self sustainability is really like yeah. kind of the the push. I mean, it's it's kind of uh, I don't want to say a hipster thing. But it's it's the hipster market. They want yeah. that. Uh, they you know environmentally friendly, environment. going green. And you know the big thing. Drink PBR. The big thing. <laughs> the big thing <laughs> in Florida is. Uh, you can't say no. Can't I'm it. with you. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not a bad tall boy. You yeah. know. I'm not, oh no, I, I order five. That, that or Bush Light. <laughs> but I love you, uh, Bush Light. But um, <laughs> the big thing, uh, donating your grains to a local farmer or anything yeah, like that's, that's a big what thing we do as well. Um, yep. So there is uh, every, yeah, yeah, everybody does it. Buckets and we have a farmer come pick it up Saturday afternoon. That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so our so city, I know, does that too. Have yeah. you heard? Have you heard about Funky Buddha's uh, no. new thing they're doing? So they just uh, they just made this a, a thing with uh, with Whole Foods, I believe. So they're Floridian. Everything they donate all of their all of their um, malts to to local farmers, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Floridian is going to be the exception. They're donating that to Whole Foods, and they're doing a collaboration bread, and the bread Ooh. will be made with the Floridian hot or the Floridian malts, wow. and We'd it's going to be in Whole that. Foods. So We'd I'm like, it'll probably be like eighteen dollars a loaf, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's pretty cheap for Whole Foods. They got to be giving like free samples out occasionally. You know, you can go on that day. Yeah, go in there and get a and then dump and it then into go a the twelve dollar hair again, and then go back yeah, out, and then it's. <laughs> <laughs> dump dump that bread into a twelve dollar cup of soup and uh, and wash yeah, it down yeah. with an eighteen dollar bottle of asparagus water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you guys feel uh, craft breweries should always have? I know we kind of touched on like obviously good beer, a good atmosphere, but like for the example I had was how can you not have a flight? Like how can you not have flights of beer? That's like that's mind blowing in my if opinion. Especially making beer there. Like Zeta had a flight. They're very. Un- I was actually really impressed. I don't drink IPAs, but their double IPA is phenomenal. I would say, like at least, you gotta have someone on staff at all times to answer questions about what you're doing there. 
or have your staff educated. Everybody yeah, the, sta- yeah, the staff needs to know what they're talking about. At least, at least on the bare minimum of the brewing process yeah, of the beers, they yeah. need to know. Especially if you're sitting there trying to push the beer that you're making, you, you need to be able to tell somebody how it's different than anything else that you have on tap. Yeah. I think it's a really big. Uh, I think flights would be the most important. Flights, I, yes. I think that's, you that's have to, as a crapper. You Free like, samples, definite. Yeah. yeah. Um, Free stickers. I don't think a yeah. dollar for a sticker is bull. People love. I don't stickers. think it's. I don't think it's necessarily a necessity, but I think it's something that <laughs> the that small brewers can take advantage of more than anybody else. Would be a growler station. Yes. Okay. I think growlers, or growlers, growlers, or, growlers, or serving growlers. I think growlers, growlers are, are a huge that's thing for a small brewery. The ability to take that beer, bottle it, and sell it, and then trade trade that or bring that to a party or bring that somewhere telling, and experience yeah. bottle I'm share. I'm telling you guy yeah. Darren here that I'm going to show up on like a Monday or Tuesday with a growler and I keep forgetting. We can't we can't do growlers the, here. Oh, no, no, no. I know you're not going to serve oh, it. Bring I a just, growler with I'm your beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bring my beer. Absolutely. Don't worry about that. Come on a bottle <laughs> share. And let him taste it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually. Bring yeah, some that. growlers up here for you guys just so because... It's not something that gets up here. Yeah, no, and that's well, that'd be, yeah, just for you and that's the thing. So, it. so you're at a tap room, right? And and if you can't bottle your beer or it's not in distribution, and you go, unless I go to your tap room, I'm not going to try your beer. So, like, I think a growlers is is a huge thing, even if it's the small growlers, even yeah. if it's just you know something to at least take home. Yeah, something you, know? you can take home with you, with and the, and the let other people name on it, the logo experience, on it, yeah. let other people see it, and then also. Growlers are kind of use universally accepted anywhere that accepts growlers will fill up your growler. So if you have your growler with your logo on it and you walk into another brewery or another place that's selling beer, yep. they're not going to run you out of the door because it's the craft beer world and they love everybody. Yep. Yeah. But and you're going to exp- you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's my growler. You know, I got this at so and so. And yeah. and it's just free advertising. It's a great way to get your beer out in the market without having to distribute, and Absolutely. and it's just it's an awesome thing all the way around. I love growlers. Right. And I think one of the that's biggest marketing idea. tools that that you can use is your customers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You have to give them a good experience and give them good beer, good product, and they will talk about it. I mean, and that's money that you don't have to spend. Yeah. On flyers, on radio like, ads, the power on, of word of mouth. Yeah. It's you gotta give huge. them a good experience and like it's huge. I went to uh, the same brewery and. They charge you like it's only a dollar, so this is whatever. But like a dollar a sticker, like, it's like I'm gonna they go should put, be free. I'm gonna put this on my car. Your Engine offsetting sticker was yeah. free. Yeah, Re- yeah well, green your room offsetting was costs, free. and I get the business behind charging a dollar, but it's like it's a sticker. Meh. Like magnets should be a dollar. So if I go to green room, which I'll probably end up going again next time I'm up there, I heard that, green room's great. It's awesome, and I buy a, do- a dollar magnet. Guess where that magnet's going? Somewhere Either on my fridge or on my car. And that's I'm paying you a dollar, but yet you're getting you know it might be the 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 benefit of having your logo on the back on the side Somewhere of my car or that wherever. It would never be. It would never my be. My sticker would me. join the billion others yeah. on the back of my laptop screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. Or my <laughs> stickers, like my stickers are on my trash can. I just yeah. pull all the craft brewery stickers I've been to. I don't know why I just do it. It's yeah. a cool trash can. It's the, yeah, it's yeah. a very probably awesome the coolest trash can. trash can. It is super cool. <laughs> but I mean, flights I think is I don't. I really don't get it. That's how, huge. How I can't they, believe you even said that a, that a crap brewery doesn't have flights. They don't have flights. And that they literally had 15 beers of their own. It's so easy. 15 beers of their they own and no flights. 15 beers on t- and no that's, flights. It's, no, it's a no-brainer. They need to have flights up there. And I think that's – it's that's a given. you got to have flights. 15, 15 beers on tap means I'm going to buy three flights. Yeah. All right. One more because <laughs> yeah. I just got reminded of it because my mind went off, uh, off topic once again because I always do. But proper glassware. It drives me freaking yeah. nuts. I've Pour only been to two. The, I've uh, only yeah. been to two breweries that have not put their beers in what would be the traditional proper glassware, and it literally it drives me nuts. I don't like drinking a double IPA out of a pint. I know I'm in the minority, probably because people are like, "Oh, eight percent. That's Give awesome. Give me more of it." You're getting more of but it, like, yeah. But like, I'm like, I want to drink the smaller quantity so that I can then drink another beer afterwards and not be terribly. I, I can see that. You know, messed up. I can see that. So yeah, he drink three double IPAs out of a pint. Man, and it's it, like it might not God, matter what the fourth. I hate is. that. And yeah. you know what else? Well, who's drinking the water hose, right? I don't want the <laughs> option. I don't want the option for the large size. Don't give me like, oh, for a dollar more, you get 20 ounces. I'm like, no, just give me the right glassware and then let me enjoy multiple beers across, yeah. you know, same thing with a flight, but it's like, you know, why are you trying to overpower what you're doing and try trying to limit? You sell one beer at 
16 ounces instead of when it should be in a 10 ounce or a 12 ounce snifter tulip, yeah, or, snifter, or a yeah. tulip or yeah. whatever and it's like you sell that one beer that could be the equivalent of two beers and now you're hurting yourself in sales one yeah. but two that person's getting too drunk yeah you know and then you have a responsibility to make to you know have the safety and, of your and most most breweries no matter how small do hit the glass or sort of thing on the head but there i've been to a few where i'm like man really you're putting your you're putting your nine percent double ipa in a pint it's probably the same ones that don't sell flights yeah like <laughs> you know green room had a flight there's four four beers for five dollars which i think is a stellar deal it's unbelievable deal and it might have been happy i don't know if it was regular price or happy hour prices but engine 15 four beers for five dollars of the of the of the, of the flights it was any any beer you wanted, and like that to me is like is a killer deal. Zeta was I think they had five beers for eight dollars. You know I see Zeta I, I follow Zeta on Instagram. I've never been there, and they liked me on Instagram, and I was like I don't know who they are, but I'm gonna like them back. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I just posted a bunch of stuff about World of Beer and all this. So they found me, they liked me, whatever. Yeah. So. I start following them back, and Instagram's I'm like, "Instagram's a jungle, man. You don't know I'm, who the hell's following I'm you." I'm looking like, at them, and I'm like, surprised "They're posting pictures of like every brewery in Florida. Always, they just like any brewery spotlight, all this stuff." And I'm like, "Are they a brewery? Are they a bar? I don't even know." But then they put the awesomest pictures of their food up. Their food is good. They're very Zeta. Zeta is very upscale. Yeah. Okay. I They're was gonna upscale. say from what I got, it's like. I'm like looking at their food and I'm like, that looks really nice. Whatever like, that is, I want to try it. They're around the <laughs> like, corner from Green Room and those two breweries are vastly different in terms of atmosphere. Like Green Room, beach theme, they got Bob Marley playing, they got dogs and surfboards and very like aqua and, and, and you know, turquoise colors. You go literally around the corner and Zeta is in like an end unit. They have an outdoor patio that faces a park a lot for Jacksonville Beach. And the inside you walk in and you, it looks like you're going to like a super fancy restaurant. Like the middle of the of the the restaurant is the bar all the way to the back the left is all the you know the the fermenters the tanks and stuff all glass everything labeled and i'm sure it's all beautiful stainless stainless perfectly like they just bought it yeah everything's really clean and you're like what you know i mean they have the kitchen the back and you're like well this is very upscale and you go to green room it's like yo bro what's up man come my bird my bird be like green room (laughs) except like I would have a pool and everybody would float around in floating chairs and just like that would, that'd and, be a good idea. green room are you listening and yeah have a, have <laughs> green room put in a pool, pool. yeah just and let like, everybody drink in those infl- not even the new kind where they're like foam and yeah. like comfy like get those An old ones pool. with the blue pontoons on the side with the cup holders <laughs> yeah. and let us all just float around and like engine 15 was like almost like a dive bar hey Ari hi how are you you want to join us all right, oh, she ran away right away <laughs> Amanda must have told her not to show up. <laughs> but, like, Engine 15 so, like, a dive bar. Like, you smell the food the minute you walk in. It's this strip mall. Love it. Like, and then uh, Ancient City is in a warehouse off of the middle of nowhere in St. Augustine. Okay. You'd get lost if you were going to it. And that's, that's how, how Swamp that's how, that used to be. That's how Twisted they're, Pine is. They're old, they're I love that. I would rather not go to Twisted Pine. Why? Do you drink that freaking no, ghost face killer? I'll drink that, but I... I Billy's Chili scarred me for life. Billy's Chili is not a good beer. Sorry, scarred Twisted me for Pine. Life. I love Ghostface Killer, so I'm tooting you while I'm bashing it. But Billy's I mean, Chili's is awkward. Ragtime is like more or less a restaurant, but they brew on premise. They have like eight beers, but like that isn't like a brick stone building in Atlantic Beach, like in the middle of downtown. Like all fancy, like we're in downtown Winter Park people <laughs> would go like to Atlantic Beach and like you know it was it was a good time, but. I want to give a shout out to Green Room before before we, we we wrap it up here. I bought a pint glass from Green Room and the 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 the, the rim was chipped, and they're sending me a new pint glass. I just want to give them a quick shout out. All I had to do is give. As a you call, can huh? see the the cuts on my hand from cleaning it. <laughs> I sent them a, a nice polite message saying, "Hey, you, want, you might want to check your pint glasses because mine was chipped." Within ten minutes, somebody texts me back. He goes, "Sorry about that. We want. What can we do to make that right for you?" Love I it. was like, awesome. Another pint glass. Is, service is right there, man. Stacks me. I'm not looking to get free a t-shirt. I'm not. I just. Yeah. Just you know they're sending you more than a I sent them a picture too, like so yeah. I'm not like pulling their chain. Like here's a picture. Like, you see the chip, and like within 10 minutes, someone they're like, all right, what can, what can we do to make that better for him? Like another pint glass, satisfactory. Before coming here, he's like, you'll have it at your house by Saturday. It's so easy. Stellar. For, it's so easy for a brewery to do something like that. Stellar. It cost them. 
next to nothing to send you an extra pint glass. They could have been like the other one that said, oh, well, bucks. we know it's wrong. We're going to sell it to you anyway. Yeah. But within 10 minutes, what? Yeah, but that is actually going to be worth a lot of money someday. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be worth a lot of money. Well, I don't know where you guys came from. I've been living in St. Augustine for 13 years. Like, whoa, all right, well, I'll that's take That's when you just say, I'm sorry. Key lime, key lime coach, please. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> but, yeah, shout out to Green Room, man. That was a class act. Class act. That's what you got to do sometimes. Yeah. So, Jeff, as we wrap up, you have any any punches, any, any things to I say? I do, yeah. I have one thing. On I have one thing to get you guys excited about. If you want to come check us out, we're doing a, uh, a Sam Adams Utopias night. Um, if you don't know what Utopias is, we talked about it briefly earlier. It is more or less uh, a, a really, really badass um, barley wine malt. It's actually, I mean, it's a, technically a fortified beer. Uh, 28% alcohol, one of the rarest beers you can get. Um, they make it every other year, right? Every other year, and it retails at a... It retails bucks. at about two hundred to two fifty, yeah. so it's, it's Hot for a bottle. So that's I mean we're doing uh, we're doing a, a flight with cheese pairings for uh, three of the Sam Adams seasonals and core brands, um, and each one will be paired with a, a cheese. And then for dessert, you get a shot of the uh, of the Utopias, which uh, on its own at two hundred fifty dollars a bottle, you're looking at usually right around twenty five thirty bucks for just a shot of it. Um, so we're doing the whole thing for thirty dollars. It's going to be on the fourteenth. That's awesome. And um, the the Utopias will be paired with uh, a chocolate, um, kind of like a cocoa nib chocolate. It should be a really nice event. It's going to be a lot of fun. I actually I'm already bought my ticket, so <laughs> I'll be there with you guys. I'm actually putting on the event, but I bought a ticket just so that I can enjoy all the beers with you. So. Um, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. That's on the fourteenth. Um, you can buy tickets anytime. Come in. It'll be uh, it'll be cash tickets, so come in and, and buy one with your bartender. Um, also, if you are a loyalty member, the thirty dollars will get you the flight. It'll get you the, the, cheese. the cheese, the chocolate. Yeah. It'll also get you a point for Sam Adams Utopias, which is going to be that's awesome. Probably one of the rarer points you ever get. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'll also get you a point for the Sam Adams flight, so you'll get two points: a shot of Utopias, flight, cheese, chocolate, thirty bucks should be a really fun night. I'm excited for it. Absolutely. That's a great deal. What's the date for that again? It's on the 14th. 14th. So. All right. But other than that, that's about it. Do we have the Dogfish Head event coming up too? We do. You want me to check real quick? I can get you a yeah. date for that. Uh, while Jeff's checking, it's the Dogfish Head 20th anniversary of one of the best craft breweries in the nation. Uh, we were having, as mentioned before, 20 Dogfish Head taps ranging from all over their catalog, beer catalog. I know I'll be here for that because... Dogfish is my jam. We yeah, will be yeah. doing a, I was, I was, I would consider an extended episode of that, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. We're probably closer to it. This is, we're about an hour and a half. That'll be a good two hour episode. Easy. Oh, well, I'll we'll probably break it up. I'll start to ramble on when I get a few dogfish heads. In this yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we will have, uh, hopefully we'll get Derek on the show. Uh, he is there. I'll text him. He'll, he'll definitely. He'll uh, Derek is their regional rep for dogfish. Might be able to get. Either Sam or one of his bosses on too. Yeah, so uh, Derek uh, used to work here. Uh, he's now with Dogfish, so we hope to have him on the show, kind of like how we have Mike on the show, as sitting in trying all twenty, hopefully Dogfish head, and being sober enough to uh, drive home, <laughs> <laughs> or at least have something valuable to say about the twentieth. <laughs> yeah, one. yeah. So that would be a, probably a very extended. I, I really want to get that that episode up and get some people to to come and hang out and stuff. Uh, Mike, do you have anything to? As Jeff's still looking up the date. No, if anyone's ever down in Vera Beach, you know, Orchid Island Brewery. Orchid right, Island. Right on Ocean Drive, 100 yards from the beach. Orchid, Orchid Island in Vero Beach. Right there, there's a sign. Uh, oh, there's a sign. It's no, uh, the November 21st. Dog, Dogfish Head event is November 21st. I think that's a Friday. Saturday. I think it's a Friday or Saturday. I believe it's a Saturday. Is it Saturday? It we'll, we'll, is a drum roll Saturday. It's a Saturday, so we'll figure that how we're going to yeah, do that that'll out. Yeah, be, it'll be ni <laughs> 19 drafts, one bottle being Worldwide Stout. Um, I mean, there, there's going to be stuff that you're not going to get very often from them. Uh, I know off the top of my head, Worldwide Stout is already really rare. A lot of the Ancient series, a lot of the, uh, the music series comes out once a year. We should have, um, we should have the Bitches Brew. Solid. Old school. 
should have uh, a lot of those a lot of those really rare dogfish head beers on so, that night. So. Yeah, those are definitely two events coming up at World Beer UCF, which we will be participating in. Obviously, we have happy hour Monday through Saturday. Jeff, three Monday, to seven. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday from three to seven. And then reverse happy hour is uh, is Sunday to through Thursday, which is ten to close, and it's the same happy hour specials, just late night. So you get uh, four dollar draft beers, um, five dollar tavern fare for select items, and six dollar glasses, nine ounce pours of wine for. Uh, so that's Monday through Friday from three to seven, or Sunday through Thursday from 10 to close so so that's cool and then check mike out on weekends preferably saturday at orchid island in vero beach he has a luxurious beard so come, make sure to compliment him on, on that <laughs> nice <laughs> thanks for having me on guys. i'll be yeah, at, i'll you. be up at orchid island no worries yeah, we'll, be, we'll be up there soon but uh thanks again for listening into another the second episode of behind the bar right at an hour and 30 like at, <laughs> are we at world of beer ucf here in orlando florida two blocks away from ucf We'll be here next Thursday at 4.30, roughly. So feel free to sit in like Amanda and Ariana. Or if you're lucky enough to be like Mike, you can join the show. But thanks again for watching. Until next time, guys, have a good night. Have a good one, guys.